A man who is known for his bravery, a man who is unmatched when it comes to his firm decisions, and he accompanied the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with loyalty and dedication and love. When it came to the battles, he was with him in every battle. Who is this? Al Zubair. Ibn Awam. He accepted Islam at a young age, and he himself says, "If you are to count what number and what position I was when it came to accepting Islam, I could safely say that I was the fifth person who accepted Islam." So again, from amongst the pioneers, his uncle, and he finds out the fact that he's become a Muslim, and he folds him up in a mat of straw. And he wraps him up in it, and he hangs him up upside down. Why is he doing that to him? Is it because he accepted Allah? He says to him, "Do kufr, revoke, move back from your belief of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his God." That's what he's asking him to do. And what does he say? Never would I commit kufr. And revoke my iman, pull away from my iman in Allah and Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And then he repeats it. And Ibn Hajar writes that when things became so difficult for Zubair ibn Awam, that he finally decided to accompany those companions who went towards Abyssinia to attain safety and security from these difficult circumstances. In regards to his physical description, the companions say that he was very tall, and some of the companions they describe how tall he was. That they say that when he would climb onto a camel, then we could see that his legs, his feet, they would almost touch the ground, and he had a light beard. And it's also mentioned that in terms of his family members. He had 19 children. Ten of them were males, and nine of them were females. He is also related to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Know the fact that his mother, Safiya, she was the daughter of Abdul Muttalib. Hence, Safiya becomes the aunt of the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Al Zubair was married to Asma. Bint Abi Bakr, and we know the fact that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was also married to the daughter of Abu Bakr, Aisha radhiyallahu anha, Umm al-Mu'minin. So there is this close relationship between Al Zubair and the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Someone had come to visit the the mother of Zubair ibn Awam radhiyallahu an. And she was reprimanding Zubair as a young child, and they said, "Why are you being so harsh?" So she said, "No." She said, "I'm training this youngster so that he will assist others in matters when life is difficult." So they accredit his commitment, his bravery, and his commitment to goodness, even in challenging situations, to the mother that the mother provided this type of training. As Zubair ibn al-Awwam, he accepted Islam the next day after Abu Bakr as-Siddiq or the following day, and his age was only 15 years. What would he know? But he was a person who had understood that it is my duty to find out what is right and wrong. Islam is the truth. So what happened? Because of all this harassment of Quraysh, as Zubair ibn al-Awwam was one of those who rushed to Abyssinia, to Africa. As the first of the migrators, and he was the youngest of the lot, according to some narrations. Something interesting happened in Abyssinia with Az Zubair ibn Al Awam. An Najashi, the negus of Abyssinia, who was the ruler, there was someone who had come to fight him with an army in order to try to overthrow him. So the Muslims were worried, and they were making du'a for An Najashi because they knew he was the one who gave them respite, and he offered them a place to live. 
And if he has to be overthrown, there's going to be a problem for the Muslims. So a Najashi happened to cross the Nile at one place and he was fighting the person who came to overthrow him. And the Muslims were on the other side making dua. So the Muslims gathered and said, you know what? We need someone to actually go across this Nile. And it was at a point where it was quite long to cross. And we need to find out the story, who is winning so that we know what to do here. Because if the others win, we have to prepare to start leaving and we have to look at another plan. So as Zubair ibn al-Awwam was the youngest of the lot. He says, I will swim across. Amazing. So what did they do? They gave him what we would term today a life vest. But what was the life vest made of? Nothing fancy. They took one of the drinking skins that they used to keep water in. And obviously it is airtight. They filled it with air. They blocked it, sealed it, and they tied it on his chest. They told him, right, you may go. So he tied it on his chest and he went through across the Nile, right to the other side, swimming as a little boy. And when he went there, he witnessed the war, the battle. He noticed that now an Najashi has won and he quickly swam back. The Muslims were waiting for him. He came back and told him, I have good news for you. An Najashi has won. This was the bravery of the youngster. Subhanallah, swimming across the Nile. It is said that he was the first man who pulled out the sword in and for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal, first in Islam. No other man did it, but he was the first. Why does he do it? Again, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he is in Dar al-Arqam. He's gathered the companions. In secret, he teaches him the Tawheed of Allah Azza wa Jal. A rumor spreads in Mecca that they have killed Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And others say the fact that he has become harmed. Upon hearing this, Az Zubair, at this young age, it is said that he was around 20. And he pushes through the people in the city of Mecca. Going to the heights of Mecca, and when he's going and running through, he bumps into the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he sees him to be okay. And he asks him, O Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, are you well? And the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said to him, Zubair, what's the matter? As Zubair says, O Messenger, I heard that they wanted to kill you. So I just came to make sure that you're okay. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala grant us a lesson. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made dua for him, prayed for him and for his bravery. He was a very, very brave man. As Zubair ibn al-Awwam radiyallahu anh. He was one of the three people whom at the time of his own hijrah to Medina, he made an announcement just like Umar ibn al-Khattab. He got up at al-Maqam and he made the tawaf and he says, Oh Quraysh, I am leaving for hijrah. Let's see what you're going to do. Anyone who wants to harm me, we'll see you on the other side. This was said by three people. Umar ibn al-Khattab, Hamza ibn Abdul Muttalib, and as Zubair ibn al-Awwam ibn Khuwaylid radiyallahu anhum jami'an. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon all of them. He was not a coward. He was a man who was brave. And he came to the battle of Badr. Again, the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they had only two horses. And as Zubair was given one of them. And it is said, that Az Zubair, that he fought and he fought fiercely and his bravery was something that no one could match and he would move like a lion and when he would attack, he would attack like a tiger and it is said the fact that upon that day that he was wearing a, a, a yellow turban a yellow turban to mark the fact that this is Az Zubair ibn al-Awwam and the companions say that we saw all the angels, they had a yellow turban tied upon their, uh, their upper portions of their heads. So when Zubair ibn al-Awam radiallahu anhu was told and the companions were told that today the angels have dressed in the same apparel as Zubair, it was the symbolism, it was the understanding that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is honoring him and respecting him. And as for Uhud, they were people that were attacking the Muslimin. One man in particular was attacking the Muslims. And Muhammad looks at Az Zubair ibn al-Awwam and told him, Oh Zubair, 
tackle this man. So Zubair ibn al-Awwam went through and overcame him in a very short time. This was a Zubair ibn al-Awwam. Badr had taken place and Uhud had taken place. So this believers, they got together, they said the only way to eliminate the Muslims is to muster such a force that would be no match to the believers. And the Prophet peace and blessings upon him didn't know how to confront this huge number of armies and these groups. And he took opinions uh, from different companions. Finally, the opinion of Salman al-Farsi radiallahu ta'ala anhu was, was agreed upon. And on top of that, what happened is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down a severe storm. And it was so severe that it was raining, it was very cold, and it was so dark, and the winds were so fearful that whatever tents that the disbeliever has, had pitched on the suburbs of Medina, these tents also started flying around because of the severity of the velocity and the strength and the power of the wind that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had sent down. And one after another, the tribes began to leave to the point that some of the Quraysh, they also began leaving and that's when they couldn't confront the believers. So during this time, the Prophet peace and blessings upon him required intelligence. So in the narration of Bukhari, and here is the highlight of Zubair ibn al-Awam radiallahu anhu. Jabir radiallahu anhu says, who will gather the intelligence from the disbelievers? So Zubair ibn al-Awam radiallahu anhu, he stood up and he said, I will be the one who will go amongst those people and gather the intelligence and the information and come back to you. Thereafter, the Prophet sallallahu again asked, he asked the third time. And each time, Zubair ibn al-Awam radiallahu anhu, he, he, he presented himself. And some of the other companions, they didn't present themselves because of the severity of the storm. And the other is that if they were caught amongst those large numbers, this means that they would not return. And when the Prophet ﷺ saw his commitment and saw his dedication, he said, for every Prophet, there are those who are their sincere helper, helpers and disciples. And from amongst my ummah and my community, Zubair ibn al-Awam is the man who is regarded as my Hawari and my assistant and my helper. We see the commitment of Zubair ibn al-Awam. Then when it came to the conquest of Egypt, at the time of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu an, Amr ibn al-As radiallahu anhu had asked for some help. So Umar al-Khattab radiallahu anhu decided to send four men with 4,000 men. Who were these four leaders? One of them was Az Zubair ibn al-Awwam. The other was Ubadat ibn al-Samit, Al-Miqdad ibn al-Aswad, and Maslamah ibn Mukhallad radiallahu anhum. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon them all. And Umar ibn al-Khattab wrote to Amr ibn al-As saying, Oh Amr, I am sending you 4,000 men. And at the top of each thousand is a man who is worth a thousand himself, which makes them 8,000. Subhanallah. Az Zubair ibn al-Awwam. He was instrumental in the conquest of Egypt. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. Zubair ibn al-Awam, he was amongst those companions that wanted to see people come together. He wanted to see people unite. He didn't want to see these type of groups of khawarij and these other groups that caused commotions and tensions within the community. So there had been two parties. One party was the party that had agreed that Uthman radiallahu anhu was martyred. One group said, first order of business should be take the revenge of Uthman, find the culprits and settle the matter. The other group said, we will do that, but we shouldn't be the first order of business. First, we need to set up the infrastructure and then we can take care of the task of investigating the assassination of Uthman radiallahu anhu. So in these groups, Zubair was on one side and Ali radiallahu anhu was on one side. Now, there was actually a campaign that took place. They, they, they took up arms against each other, the battle of Jamal. But during this confrontation, there was a point where Zubair ibn al-Awam said that is there any way we can stop this confrontation? Is there any way we can negotiate? So Ali radiallahu anhu, he said, okay, let's see if we can negotiate the matter. Zubair radiallahu anhu said, negotiations are the best. I don't want to see people losing their lives. So there was an understanding that Ali radiallahu anhu and Zubair ibn al-Awam radiallahu anhu, they would come at some point and meet and they would settle the matter. So they ended up meeting. 
Ali radiallahu anhu said one thing, only one thing to Zubair. He said, look, you are a Sahabi, I am a Sahabi. You are related to the Prophet sallallahu I am related to the Prophet sallallahu But he told Zubair, he said, Zubair, do you remember when the Prophet, peace and blessings upon him, said to you that you will oppose me somewhere in my life? And then he recalled and he said, yes, I remember now. So he said, look, the words of the Prophet are right in front of you. That he said to you that you will oppose me. And it's not good that you oppose Ali. So Zubair ibn Awam, he recalled the words of the Prophet and he said, that's it. He said, I'm not participating in this confrontation. I forgot about these words of the Prophet, peace and blessings upon him. So he got onto his camel and whoever was with him, he said, I'm going back to Medina. And I'm going to stay away from this confrontation and this challenge because these are companions, these are Sahaba. And this whole chaos, it has been started by the Khawarij. And it's led to this point that now the Sahaba are opposing each other. So Zubair ibn al-Awam, he got onto his camel. He went with his flock of people and he's heading towards Medina. And now what happened is some of the Khawarij, they came to know that Zubair has been a cause for settling the matter for bringing unity to the community. So this group of people, they didn't want to see this unity. So when they saw this, they said the only solution to this is to assassinate Zubair. So they went out looking for Zubair radiallahu anhu. They found him, they intercepted him, and they, and they murdered him. And he became a martyr on his way back to Medina al Munawwara. The man who had martyred as Zubair ibn al-Awwam wanted to enter to meet Ali, Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu refused. He said, I don't want to see this man. He began to cry and he wept so much. And then he said, I have hope in my heart and I know that Allah will gather myself, meaning Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu, Talha ibn Ubaidillah, Az Zubair ibn al-Awwam and Uthman ibn Affan in paradise. And we will be together. And then he recited the verses of the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we have removed from their hearts that ill feeling they had for one another. Now they are on beddings, lying, facing one another as brothers. The year 36 Hijri saw the battle of the camel where some of the companions had lost their lives from amongst them, Talha ibn Ubaidillah and as Zubair ibn al-Awwam ibn Khuwaylid radiyallahu anhum. May Allah be pleased with them and may he be pleased with us all. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallahu wa bihamdih. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk.